Okay, we're back live here in Silicon Valley, California for Brocade's special tech analyst day. This is SiliconAngle.tv's The Cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined with Stu Miniman from Wikibon.org, and we have the CTO Dave Stevens, uh, VP of Corporate Development as well. I am. So you're in yep. charge of all the M&A and uh, the money and acquisitions and exactly. big exactly. investment decisions. Exactly, uh, so you guys, within, within some constraints, no doubt. So right. you guys made a good investment a couple of years ago in this whole idea of software and the network fabric. Sure. Uh, take us through, one, what's happening today, and take us back to that investment decision and how it all came today. Well, I think the investment decision really happened back, uh, I think we started the development back in 2008. Uh, we had, uh, had done very well in the storage networking business, um, and we saw a lot of the characteristics of the storage networking business and, uh, and what customers liked about that, the, the resiliency, the, uh, the efficiency of those networks. Uh, and we were looking to um, take that discipline and take that engineering, um, uh, uh, um, the technologies into other areas of the network. And we saw um, the emergence of virtualization technologies inside of the data center. Um, what was happening there and what was very clear was that there was too much complexity in the ethernet side of the data center. And so we made the decision to um, take that same resiliency and that flat network architecture that had, had had so much success on the fiber channel side of the network and apply that over to the uh, to the Ethernet world. Uh, so we started that development back in 2008. And now you got the fabrics and the Ethernet fabric out there, and now with, we were just at VMworld, where we saw the, the huge buzz around this era. Sure. And the whole market's going Absolutely. crazy for network virtualization. Yeah. And yeah. so here we are, right, going the next uh, massive growth. So. How do you guys feel about that, and what do you, what's your mindset right now? Well, I think we, 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 uh, we are fully supportive of all the emerging software-defined networking technologies and network virtualization. I think the requirements out of customer environments are very clear. Um, uh, you know, customers want to take complexity out of that data center infrastructure, and ultimately, what they want to do is they, you know, they want to solve business problems. So they want to um, look at their data center infrastructure as a pool of different assets, they want to look at security elements, they want to, they want to look at, um, uh, at load balancers, they want to look at virtual machines and applications, they want to look at pooled storage. They want to identify those resources and then they want to effectively assemble those um, into a, into a, a software-defined data center. Um, and, the, and the way that you have to do that is to take the network infrastructure that's in place in the data center and you have to add an ability externally to connect up those resources on command. And that means you have to add a programmatic interface and a software-defined interface to the existing network infrastructure to make that, uh, make that happen. So that's, that's where the customers are taking us. So, so, so Dave, the, the word of the day is you know, simplification, uh, automation, and, and innovation, I think we're sure. talking here. Yeah. Um, with, with software being such a dominant piece of the discussion here, can you walk us through the discussion of kind of the, the custom ASICs that you guys make versus kind of everybody other than, than you, maybe Mellanox and Cisco, you know, going merchant silicon. You know, is that kind of just a, a basic philosophy uh, or is it something that you kind of consider and are looking along the way as to what happens? Well, I, I think as you know uh, about us, we use, we use a combination of merchant silicon uh, in certain products within the portfolio and then we invest and use uh, 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 ASICs in other parts of the portfolio. Um, and I think um, it's very well understood that if you can correctly identify the specific application, if you know what the requirements are, um, you know what you're trying to get done, um, you can build a tremendous amount of technology on a silicon. You can get to uh, better power uh, levels, you can get to higher levels of reliability, you can get to better performance levels, but it's a major investment to go do that. I think the, um, the merchant silicon vendors in particular have to serve a much um, broader audience of applications and a much broader audience of consumers. Uh, in, the, in the data center in particular, we know exactly what we want to get done. Uh, we have the teams in place to go do that, and so we can apply ASIC technologies to those, uh, to those issues, and we can get to um, products that we can't build uh, any other way. Okay, so so when, when it makes sense, we invest in the ASICs, and other places we continue to use merchant silicon. Yeah, so, so, so it is a significant investment. You know, how do you make Huge. those decisions as to you know, which markets you're really going to target and uh, you know, put the functionality in? How, how do you stay? I mean, the development cycles are long. So you know, walk us through that process. As to yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we have a team today that's uh, capable of doing multiple large capacity ASICs. We try and stay on the, the absolute um, leading edge of, um, of uh, process technology so that we get the best efficiency that we can get. And again, we target environments where we know specifically what the requirements are and, and where the products can benefit from the investment. Um, 
And if it's a more general purpose product, we probably won't use ASICs. When it's a product in the data center, which is really our home turf, um, then we'll use ASICs in there and we'll put, uh, put those into specific applications where you know, we, we know exactly what's happened. In the fiber channel space, for example, we're shipping, I believe, our seventh generation uh, switching ASIC uh, products today. We rolled out uh, four or five more ASICs today and some of the product announcements that we uh, did around the VCX, uh, the VDX products in the data center, and also accelerating um, and improving the 10 gig density on some of our MPLS routers. So, so, so. Yeah, I know we're not talking much about fiber channel at the show here, it's a yeah. real focus on ethernet, but let's talk about fiber channel for sure. a second because uh, I, I've seen a, a good amount of brocade solutions ending up in converge solutions. So yeah. uh, we were at the EMC Specs launch, right. uh, you're a partner of IBM on their pure systems, right. uh, Hitachi's using you, so where, where do you see, you know, Wikibon we did a kind of deep research on convergence, right. and we're seeing that, you know, it, it's just, at the beginning of this trend, whether it be single SKU environments or you know, kind of the reference architectures. You know, what, what's your take on where convergence is today? Well, I think where convergence is being applied in the network today is where it makes sense to do it, right? So at the very edge of the network, uh, where you typically have servers with a lot of adapters in them, a lot of fiber channel adapters, a lot of ethernet adapters, you have a, uh, 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 an equivalent number of switch ports as the first hop into the network. That's a location where it makes a lot of sense to take storage traffic, take ethernet traffic, converge those onto a pair of, uh, of uh, CNAs, yeah. run a couple of cables out of your okay. server, yeah, come I, into the first hop in the network. Yeah, I, I apologize, I, not, not speaking specifically about like convergence, say yeah. with FCOE, but yeah. talking about stack convergence, oh, about okay. building okay. environments where the networking is part of the, just the, the whole solution, whether okay. it be something like IBM where it's a box and they stick your blade in, yeah. or like a B-Specs where it's your box and, uh, and, and a reference architecture. So the, the whole you know, selling that kind of you know, fing, single tested out baked environment. You know, I yeah. guess a broader question, you know, where does networking sit in the stack and what's the, the evolution of that? Well, I think you never get rid of the networking component because it is the essential element that connects everything together and provides connectivity between all the different elements. I think there is a desire among the customer base to, to buy pre-configured tested stacks um, and to buy those in pods. But at the same time, customers want the flexibility and when they want the ability um, to use different vendors and use different components and get the best of breed components within those stacks. And so it's a buying convenience and it's a testing convenience to buy them you know, a package at a time, but they don't want to give up the flexibility to change out of that package and go to a different vendor as, nece uh, as necessary. To the extent that um, there's better integration by pre-packaging things and pre-integrating things and it takes out some of the configuration nightmares that customers have, I think that um, you know, the industry will continue to, to uh, move that direction. Dave, I want to ask you about um, the Nasir acquisition, because obviously that's uh, causing a lot of noise in the industry. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And buzz, buzz and noise. Yeah. It's, it's good, it's good for everybody. It's real pushing the envelope, we love it. Sure. Um, but that being said, um, obviously a big statement by VMware, and the traditional network vendors, you guys, Juniper, Cisco, uh, mainly Juniper and Cisco are all going, wow. As much as they don't say, oh, we're not affected by this, and VMware put out some sort of press release that they're partnering with Cisco. It yeah. wasn't really, nothing to announce other than they're partnering with Cisco. Um, it catches people off guard, so we're seeing kind of a repositioning around some existing networking. Uh, Martin from Nasir clearly said on theCUBE, hey, I want to disrupt networking. That was his passion. Right. It's being disrupted, so how do you see this all evolving relative to the incumbent networking guys? Uh, and we'll throw HP into that mix too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they got to essentially think, hey, the data center's changing. Right. We're seeing clear examples <coughs> of that. Solid state is changing caching architectures anywhere across the line, the role of data. Right. And you know, networking has been that last bottleneck that's now being addressed by virtualization. Right. So it's, you know, as Mike said, it's a decade's worth of build out. Right. And we're right. at the beginning. Right, so well, I, think I think there's a very clear desire among the customer base to simplify the networking architecture and simplify the connectivity of the different pieces within the data center, right? I mean, ultimately, what customers want to do is they want to um, select resources in the data center and then they want to have the network provide connectivity um, between these resources in the data center and give themselves the ability to effectively you know, b build a virtual data center driven by software. Um, one way to begin doing that is to simplify the architecture that you're building on top of. So this is really our focus around fabric technologies to take you know, what customers clearly don't like, which are these deep, hierarchical, complex networks with lots of proprietary protocols, and move those to a flatter, faster architecture that's built for virtualization and built for you know, multi-tenancy uh, effectively. What, what SDN effectively adds on top of that 
is a software abstraction layer that gives us the ability to add programmatic controls on top of that network infrastructure. So, you know, in our, in our view, the two work hand in hand. Um, we're a big proponent of SDN, we're a big proponent of, uh, of NICERA and of Martins. We've had a long relationship with those guys as we have had with VMware and with Microsoft. And, uh, and our job is to make the network infrastructure as efficient as possible and make sure that it fits into um, those SDN environments as, as, they, um, as they evolve. I think yeah. as you saw at, at uh, part of uh, Analyst Day today, um, we've done some very comprehensive announcements with VMware, for example, around uh, VXLAN and around NVGRE, uh, as well as the NICERA controller. So we're, we're all in. Right, so, so, so Dave, uh, you know, when you look at what NICERA is doing, uh, one of the big pieces of it is distributed systems. So I, I heard two <coughs> things that I'm wondering if you can comment on from your, your announcement today. One sure. is, you know, you guys are, you, your, your cluster is building out up to 24 switches. And secondly, you know, the WAN becomes more important. So whether that be the overlay technologies, like yep. VXLAN yep. and uh, uh, NVGRE, or, uh, you know, you, you in your presentation this morning said, you know, distance doesn't matter anymore. And so, <laughs> you know, I, a little, little latency bit of, and the yeah, speed of light yeah, yeah. problem, latency right? Latency and the speed of light, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I think so there's we, still we, a couple of challenges left so, there. So but can uh, you just yeah. talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing, distributed systems, you know, whether that be kind of, you know, large data center service providers to, to the WAN, well, you know, what are the biggest challenges you guys are facing and how are you addressing it? Yeah, well I, th I think the biggest thing used to be, you know, when we all sort of grew up in the networking industry, we were taught to keep as much traffic inside of the building as possible and minimize the amount that tra got transported across the wide area. And that's because you had, to, you had to pay for the wide area bandwidth where the bandwidth inside of the building was largely viewed to be, uh, to, to be free. Um, that disparity in cost and performance levels is beginning to, to go away, right? I mean, you still have to pay for your WAN bandwidth, but today you can buy an awful lot of bandwidth for not very much money. And so it's making it possible to begin to distribute applications geographically between data centers. Um, if you're going to do that from a networking perspective, you still have to um, overcome the effects of latency and the effects of distance you know, in, the, in that connectivity, but it is becoming possible to begin to distribute ap applications geographically and put them in the locations that it makes the most sense from a business uh, you know, perspective. So, so the other so, thing when we, we look at, I'm, I'm sorry, are you saying? No, 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 okay, so The other thing yeah. when we talk about VXLAN is if you look at kind of the layer four through seven applications, yep. you know, what lives in an appliance, you know, you know, what's the role of you know, the F5s and riverbeds of the world yep. uh, versus software and you know, what's Brocade's place in this whole ecosystem? Well I think uh, you know, anytime you build out a data center there are um, elements that you build out inside of the data center, your compute elements, your storage elements, there's services elements like firewalls, load balancers, right? And, uh, and uh, those can be deployed in the data center either as a, um, a fixed appliance or they can be deployed um, increasingly as a virtual machine. And it really depends on the customer environment. There are certain customers that will deploy all those services as virtual machines. There are certain customers that build those as, uh, you know, um, large appliances, and so I think both of those approaches are going to be around for a long time, and both of them have to be accommodated within uh, within the data center architectures. Dave, um, I want to ask you yeah. a question around. I know we're tight, tight on time, and your handlers are wanting to move you to another location here yeah. this Brocade Tech Day. But I want to ask you to talk to the audience about something kind of more um, abstract around the, the networking, because with the iPhone 5 announcement today, yeah. obviously everyone's a buzz about the iPhone. It's just a great product, and, and it really points to the pressure of the marketplace, the demand for yeah. this new era, a new user experience, and, and it's driving a ton of under the covers, or if you look under the hood, it's just driving more and more traffic, obviously mobile. Um, so on the consumer side, it's pretty obvious, there's a huge pressure on the service providers. Yeah. On, at every level, right? And then, yeah. so that's one area. The other area I want, but that, we'll go to that in a second, but I want you to talk on the enterprise, because they are got to push the envelope now, and you know, bring your own device to work has been talked about, but really, there's new services, so there's like an right. iPhone effect right. going on at the enterprise. Right. So talk about that, and then also talk about the consumer. Where's the big pressure on the networking side that just wasn't around eight years ago? Yeah, well, I think that the, the networking environment and the focus of CIO has moved from automating business functions. What, what Jeffrey Moore had typically called systems of, uh, systems of record, right? Um, HR applications, finance, accounting applications, things that got built inside a data center. We've now, with devices like the iPhone 5 and the iPad and the Galaxy tablet and other types of devices out at the edge of the network, we put so much processing capacity out in the hands of the average user that the focus of the CIO has now changed, right? If I'm, uh, if I'm sitting out with my iPad, I'm effectively my own IT department. 
Um, you know, I pull information from, from colleagues, from competitors, from third-party websites, from my internal website, and I amalgamate that information up on my iPad. I, mean, I, I solve my own business problems and I make my uh, you know, I make my own decisions out there. And there's obviously, that that and BYOD causes all kinds of problems for the CIO around security, but from a networking perspective, it completely changes the dynamics of the network. Um, because now I have a, um, a an originator and a consumer of information that is completely mobile, that is completely unpredictable, and the sources that they're going to use to derive their information, there's no way to actually predict where it comes. Uh, and so the traffic patterns within the wider network infrastructure, it become completely unpredictable. And the only thing we can really do to accommodate that is try and build you know, sort of the next generation of global communications infrastructure and build it in a way that's effectively um, limitless, that facilitates connectivity from any user to any other so user. So total disruption under the hood, complete re-architecture to make that happen and enable those new services. And we have to go rebuild it over the next decade. Final question, I know I got a short answer because you got to get, got to go. Um, what investment areas are you looking at right now? Obviously you guys made a good call, good investment for Brocade. You're in a good spot, market spun right where you thought it would go. Yep. You know, you skated to where the puck is. Um, what's your, your investment focus right now in Corp Dev and uh, just overall corporate wise? Yeah, well I would say we continue to focus you know, where the company was born, which is uh, in the data center environments. We have unique expertise that started there with the fiber channel space, but it's all around you know, six nines of reliability and resiliency and power efficiency and things like that. So, you know, one focus is is uh, taking that philosophy to the other parts of the data center, um, predominantly with Ethernet fabric technology, but also with core routers and traditional top rack switches and application delivery controllers and other kinds of technology. Uh, I would say our other focus area is where um, there's tremendous spending and pressure today, which is in the service provider market. Um, the service providers uh, as a whole are carrying more traffic. They're not getting um, really paid for a lot of the traffic. Um, there's there's a cost pressure in those environments and they're re-architecting the carrier networks to be able to carry more applications and more traffic and do it at lower cost and that's causing them to re-architect and look at new technologies in those environments. Uh, and ultimately those carrier networks are what connect the two data centers together. So those are the two main um, Focus awesome. areas that we're, uh, that we're working on. Dave Stevens, CTO, VP of Corporate Development for Brocade, uh, Brocade Innovation Day here, talking yep. about what's happening Thanks under the, the hood, powering all the mobility, the iPhone 5, enterprise applications, be your own <laughs> IT department, uh, great for this new era. Thanks so much for joining theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest on SiliconANGLE TV right after this short break. Thanks a lot.